Let's take an ordinary apple and a large magnet. Of course, the magnet does not affect the apple in any way. But what if you put two apples on a wooden stick and balance them in the air? Now, you can see that the magnet still causes small fluctuations in the apple. It seems that there really is a lot of iron in this fruit. This trick is also great with grapes. Who would have thought that fruits and berries can be magnetic? We will install the magnet on the stand and take a couple of needles on the thread. As you can see, they immediately begin to reach for it, pulling the threads. Now we're heating up the needles as it seems they're starting to lose the interest in the magnet. And they fall completely. If you hold magnet over matches, then no effect will follow. But if you let them burn out, they immediately require magnetic properties. And not only a big magnet, but with such a small one. How is this possible? Let's try again with color matches. At last, nothing comes out with them. Let's take four magnets and 16 steel balls. Now, we'll open up the plastic baseboard and place them inside as follows. Push a lonely ball to the nearest magnet and BAM! All the balls have changed their position. And the extreme one flew out the baseboard at a decent speed. This is a real magnetic rifle. Pour some PVA glue into a bowl. Add some steel spraying and bright gouache. Mix the mass until smooth. And now add sodium and we'll mix it until the mass turns into real slime. But this is not just your ordinary slime. It's worth bringing a magnet and see what happens. Slime envelops any source of magnetism, like a living slime. It's not easy to tear it off now. Holding the magnet at a distance, you can see how the slime seems to be pulling a tentacle towards it. Because of this, he really looks like something's alive. Just look how strongly this mass is drawn to the magnet. Much more interesting than your usual slime, right? Let's take a small plastic bottle, make a funnel out of a piece of paper, and pour some printer ink inside. Using a syringe, add alcohol inside until the bottle is filled. Close the lid tightly, and now put a magnet to the walls. Look what's going on inside. 
the magnet seems to purify alcohol from ink, they literally separate from each other. See how beautiful it can look, like a black waterfall that is directed upwards. All ink, no matter how well it has been stirred, will still be attracted to the magnet. Let's take another look at how quickly alcohol will become transparent again under the influence of a powerful magnet. An amazing sight, like a liquid hourglass. Let's take a new batch. Let's take a new batch of powder ink and mix it with oil. Pour a little in the glass and with the help of a magnet, we will get an unusual drawing tool. We do not recommend repeating this trick at home. We will bring the magnet to a laptop screen and it immediately goes out. Even a small magnet is enough. But remember that it can end badly for technology. Mysterious things also happen to a smartphone. When a magnet approaches, the screen goes out and lights up again. Let's take an ordinary magnet. As you can see, it is perfectly attracted to iron. But what if we heat it up the same way we heated the needles? After the magnet has become so hot, it's no longer attracted to iron. But even after it cools down, the magnetic properties will not return. Even another magnet can't move it anymore of the rope to an ordinary ice cube. Now we put a pinches of salt on top and wait for the reaction, during which the ice melted a little. But not everything is so simple. If you pull the rope, you'll realize that the cube is frozen to the rope and very hard. No matter how you swing it, it won't fall off. And now, Let's take a bigger cube and add salt that will need more than a couple of pinches. We will distribute it and attach an ordinary towel on top. We will firmly press it and turn it over so that the cube presses with its own weight. After about two minutes, the cube froze to the towel. And it can even be lifted into the air. Incredible reaction of ice with salt. We will need half a liter of water in a bottle. Let's leave it for about four hours and then put it in the freezer for another hour and a half. Carefully take it back out. Now strike one light blow and the water starts to freeze right in front of your eyes. Incredible, isn't it? Or you can hit the bottle on the table and get the same effect. And if you try to pour this water into a glass, it will begin to form an ice column. Carefully pour this water into a glass and then attach an ice cube to the surface. The water begins to gradually crystallize and after a couple of seconds, the cube quietly stays on a solid surface. tiny piece of ice is enough to trigger a freezing reaction in the whole glass. And just look how beautiful it is. By the way, you can pull off a similar trick with cola. But you need to freeze it for about 3 hours and 15 minutes. Open the lid by activating the gases. 
and then abruptly close it. And hit the bottle and the cola instantly turns into ice. Again, the trick with the lid. Then hit the table and instead of a drink, it's an ice block. Let's take an ordinary ice cube and hit it with the hammer. It instantly shatters into small pieces. And now an unusual cube. The first blow didn't hurt him. And the second, and the third. And fourth, it's like it's indestructible. What's his secret? It's synthetic insulation. Pour the water into the ice mold and put the insulation in there. We fill it to the top and fill it with water all the way to the end. We'll freeze it and take our cube out. It looks like an ordinary ice, but even a hammer can't handle it. It's amazing how much its properties have changed from a piece of insulation. Let's take a fruit juice and pour it into a plastic bag like this. Let's put the bag in a bigger bag and now surround it with ice. Evenly distribute it over the entire area of the packaging. It is important that the juice bag remains exactly in the center. And now, add salt to the ice at a decent amount. Close the bag and distribute the salt inside so that it comes in contact with all the ice. Wrap it with the paper towel and leave it for 10 minutes. We take out a bag of juice and what do we see? It seems we have a whole package of delicious fruit ice cream. In just a couple of minutes, you'll lick your fingers. Here we have three vessels with seemingly identical liquids. We gently lower a raw egg into each one of them, gently lowering them along the wall. And now, let's add ice cubes here. In the first vessel, we have alcohol, egg, and ice drowned. In the second, there's fresh water, the ice has surface, and the egg's in the bottom. And in the third vessel, we have salt and water. There's ice and egg on the surface. Pour into a glass of water to the very edges and drop an ice cube into the water. The ice has melted, but the water doesn't seem to have been spilled. Then we'll add another ice cube. has melted, but the water's not overflowing yet, so immediately the third one. The third cube also did not allow the water to pour out, but unfortunately, the fourth place was not enough. And now we need water, soda, and vinegar. Mix soda and vinegar in the saucepan with the violent reaction. Let's leave them for about three hours. When the reaction is over and we got this mass, to which we will add more water. Turn on the gas and put the pan on the fire. Stir them over low heat until the liquid becomes almost transparent. Pour it into a glass vessel and leave it to cool down at a room temperature.
pour a little of our liquid on the surface and it immediately begins to crystallize. We'll pick up a little powder from the walls on the pan with the wooden stick and dip it into ordinary water. Like snowflakes, they spread over the entire surface as if freezing the water. Look at this pattern. The more points there are, the faster the reaction proceeds. Just look how beautiful it looks. Let's try to crumble our crystals. They look like ice, but they are hot. If we smoothly pour out our liquid, then it'll begin to form in such a column. The freezing is just instant. And if you lower a wooden stick into a vessel with this liquid, it instantly becomes covered with crystals and then completely gets stuck in the solidified liquid. This time, the crystals seem to create a flower on the stick, but they continue to grow, filling the entire container. Let's lower a branch of a plant into the container. Having so many points of contact, Crystals fill the entire vessel almost instantly. This process looks truly fascinating. I want to watch it again and again. And most importantly, every time it's an absolutely unique result. Just fascinating.